So in this tutorial we're going to be doing some more JavaScript practice exercises, but this time we're going to be looking at regular expressions. So regular expressions aren't something that are unique to JavaScript, but we'll be solving some problems that basically use some of the JavaScript functions that can take a regular expression to match a pattern in a string. So let's dive in and take a look at the problems and get you set up. So I've created a gist and I'll put a link to this in the description below and what you'll find in the gist is there are five variables that each correspond to each exercise and basically each variable is just a string. So for each of these strings we're going to have to perform a particular task to do the exercise and if you want to have a go at the exercises yourself feel free to pause the video now and then come back and go through any of the answers if you need to or jump to a specific answer in the links in the description below. So I'm going to go ahead and go through all of the individual exercises in turn now. So I'm going to actually first of all copy the variables onto my clipboard and if I head over to my developer tools and just paste those into there, they're now ready for us to complete the exercises. So let's make start with exercise one and for the first exercise it's probably a bit more complicated than you actually think but what we actually need to do is use a regular expression pattern to get a list of all the three letter words in the x1 string. So if we have a look at that x1 variable basically we should be looking for the, fox and the. So there are obviously other ways that you can do this for example using the filter array method but for this example we're going to be doing the challenge with a regular expression pattern. And if we're looking to match patterns within a string in JavaScript, we can actually use the map function on the actual string. So if we say x1.match, and you can see the function will take in a regular expression. So the first thing we want to do is create our regular expression. And in JavaScript, a regular expression is held within two forward slashes. Note that there's actually no single or double quotes. It's not a string. It's actually a literal value. And at the moment, it'll just interpret that as a comment. So we actually need to put something inside of the two forward slashes, which is the pattern that we want to match. So basically, I want to match any upper or lowercase character to start off with. So we can do that by using a character class. And we can say we want to match any characters in between A and Z and also in uppercase A to Z as well. And there are other ways of matching letters with a regular expression, but just for now I'm just showing you that you can use a character class to match any letter by using this range. Of course, if you wanted to limit it as well, you can do that too, but we want to match any letter within the alphabet, so we want A to Z. And if we actually go ahead and run that match function, you'll see we get this large object back, which has a few different properties, such as the input, the, the string that was actually uh, the regular expression was called on, and also this groups property. And this first item here with the property of zero is actually the match that we got back. So the match that we got is an uppercase T, which makes sense because we've basically asked our regular expression to match any lowercase or uppercase letter in our string. And the first one it found was an uppercase T. But of course we want to actually match words that have three characters. So we can update our regular expression to actually use curly braces and then a number. So that's basically saying we want to match three upper or lowercase letters within our string. So now you can see the first item that's returned is actually the first three letter word, which is the. But once our match function has found one occurrence of our pattern that we've supplied, the matching function will actually stop. So we can provide a modifier to the regular expression to tell it to keep going. And that modifier comes after the last forward slash and it is the G modifier, which is just short for global. So now we're getting somewhere because we're actually getting a list of three letter words out of our string. The problem is it's matching the first three characters from the longer words. So we need to tell the regular expression, the pattern, that to stop matching if the word that we're looking at is actually longer. So what we can say is after the first three characters have been matched, we want to match a space. And it's a bit difficult to actually specify any type of white space within our pattern. So we use a special character class, which is basically a backslash and an S. And this will match any white space within our string, or at least any white space that comes after the, a three character word. And now we're actually getting the last three characters of the word. So we want to actually put a space before our three characters are matched as well. So we can put another forward slash S at the start of our pattern. Now we're actually getting matches for some of the three letter words inside of our string, but unfortunately we're missing out the first and last ones as well. So we should also get another the at the start and also dog at the end. So there are some special symbols we can use in our pattern to match the start and the end of the string, because obviously the reason the first one's failing is we don't have a space before the uh, first the in our string. So to match the start of the string, we can actually use the caret symbol. 
So we can say either we're at the start of the string or we've got a space and then we've got three characters and then we're either getting the end of the string which is represented by the dollar symbol or a space occurs after that. So by using the caret symbol and the dollar symbol we can tell our pattern that we actually want to check for three letter words that actually start either at the beginning of the string or occur at the end of the string and they don't have a trailing space. So that was a bit of a journey to get to the answer for exercise one, but hopefully you've learned a couple of different things about how regular expressions are put together and how you might match strings inside them. As I say, you probably wouldn't use this approach if you were trying to extract all the three letter words from a string, but it's certainly an interesting approach. And if you have a requirement to do other things with the string, then you can start to see how regular expressions might be useful. So let's move on to exercise two. So for exercise two, we've got another string and it's basically some letters and numbers all mixed up together. So we can use a really simple regular expression to either match the numbers or the letters in the string. But this time, instead of using the match function, what we're actually going to do is call the replace function, which will actually accept a regular expression as well. So we can set that up in there and I'll already add my G modifier onto there. And basically what we're going to do is find any numbers in the string and just replace them with an empty string. So how do we match just numbers in a string? We saw in the first exercise that we can match any characters by using the character class of A to Z. They're all uppercase in this instance, so this should match them. And if we run that, you can see we get a new string with all of the letters removed from the exercise two variable. So in order to remove all of the numbers, all we need to do is change that character class Instead of a to z, we'll say zero to nine. And calling the replace function again, removes all of the numbers from the initial string. So that's it, that's all we need to do for exercise two. And this is a good example of how using a regular expression with a different function like replace can extend its capability of not only just matching patterns, but doing something with the source string as well. So that's pretty much it for exercise two. Uh, let's take a look at exercise three. So for exercise three, we had another variable, which was x3. And what we're actually trying to do here is actually extract the value, uh, the monetary value, the 999 from the overall base string. And we may or may not wish to include the dollar symbol in that as well. So we're going to use the match function again. So we'll say x3.match and we'll set up our regular expression. So we saw from the previous exercise to match a number, we can use the zero to nine class, but we can also use a shortcut for that as well. We can say a backslash D short for digit will actually match a number as well, but it'll only match one instance of the number. So you might think to match the whole string, we do something like dollar backslash D and then a full stop backslash D backslash D, but you'll see that doesn't actually match anything for us. And the reason for that, if you remember back to exercise one is the dollar symbol is actually a special character within a regular expression to match the end of the string. So what we actually need to do is put a backslash to escape that as well. And although we're getting the correct answer in the response in our match function here, the period or full stop symbol is also a special character within a regular expression, which is designed to match any character that is possible within our string. So for example, if the period or full stop here was actually a colon or some other symbol, this regular expression would still match. So what we would be best off doing is actually putting a backslash in front of that as well. And that will allow us to match the literal symbol of the full stop or period. Of course, if we want to get the value out of our match as well, we might want to access that zero property that's inside of the object that's returned. And there you can see we've got the 999 value that was stored in the original X3 string. So this will only match specific values inside of our string. So for example, if the salad then becomes 1299, this regex will actually fail because we're only looking for one digit after the dollar sign. So we could potentially match one or more digits by using our curly brace syntax. And we could say we could have between one and three. It would then therefore match our 1299 value or in fact any value up to $999. So that's it for exercise three. Let's take a look at exercise four. So with exercise four, we actually have a telephone number inside of our string. And so we're going to want to match that number by checking for digits inside of that string. So let's put what we were looking at in the previous example into practice so that we could match a variable number of digits. So we can use the match function again. And here I'm going to match anything between three and four digits. And that's because the first block of digits we have is four numbers and the next two are only three. So if we run our regular expression, we get the first block out, but of course we want to match all of those values inside there. So let's use the global modifier. 
And so we get all of the components of the phone number out into an array. And we can join that all together. But with our regular expression, we can actually specify that we're looking for three sets of these three or four digit blocks. And the way we do that is first say we're expecting a space after one of those blocks. And then we're expecting three of these blocks. Now, the actual three here will actually be looking for three spaces. So we actually need to wrap this inside some brackets so that it groups them. So we're actually looking for three groups of these digit blocks and also a space after that. So if we run that now, we actually don't get a match. And if we break this down, we're looking for three blocks of three or four digits and a space. So we get a match here because we've got four digits in a space. Then we've got three digits in the space, and then we've just got three digits. So what we could do is just make that last space optional by putting a question mark after the special character for matching spaces. And that will just make the spaces optional within the number. And now we get a match because the regular expression isn't failing when it gets to the end of the string and doesn't find that last space. So not a foolproof method for matching any kind of phone numbers, but you can see how you could use that kind of pattern matching to look for various sequences of digits, if that's the kind of information that you're looking for in a string. So that's one solution for exercise four. Let's take a look at the final exercise, which is exercise five. So the aim of exercise five is basically to get the email address out of the string. And matching email addresses with regular expressions is notoriously difficult because of the different formats of email addresses that you can have and the different types of top level domains. For our example, we know what the email address is and we know what the top level domain is. So we can use a very rough regular expression to do our matching. So for exercise five, let's call the match function again. And one way to do a rough email match is to use a special character which actually matches anything but a space. So we could say, backslash uppercase s. So this backslash s will basically match any character that's not a space in our string. And we want to match multiple of those so we can match the first name in the email address here. So I'm going to use a special character which is a quantifier and the plus symbol will actually match one or more characters. And in this case, they're any character that aren't a space. And then we're going to match the literal at symbol. So by running that, you can see we get the first part of the email address and we actually don't match the Twitter handle that comes before it. So to match the rest of the email address, the domain name, what we can then do is use that special not space character again. And we're going to match one or more of those after our at symbol. And then we want to match a literal full stop or period symbol. So we'll use the backslash and then a dot again. And then finally, we're going to match one or more not space characters again. So in this example, that was just a simple way to not actually match the Twitter handle, but actually extract the email address from the string. But of course, if the top level domain had two parts, like it was a .co.uk or had other components to it, then of course this wouldn't actually work. But coming up with a regular expression to match any kind of email address can be quite tricky. So there we have the five exercises for using regex with JavaScript. Hopefully you found that useful and you've learned a little bit about regular expressions and how you can use them with some JavaScript functions. Of course, if you came up with any different solutions yourself, feel free to post them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorial updates. So that's it for this tutorial. I'll see you next time.